So in this video, we'll look at what's new in version 2.2 of First Person Exploration Kit. So the main part of the update includes doors and drawers. We'll take a look at those in a second. There's also a couple little uh, changes in helper scripts and different ways to lock both doors and drawers. And we'll take a look at both of those and how you set them up in the editor. So first, looking at drawers, um, they are set up with no code required. You just put in the object, add the scripts, move some transforms around and set your options in the inspector and you're done. So there's full documentation available on step-by-step -step how to go through and set that up for your different drawer meshes. The key components of a drawer include a drawer pole, so the interaction that the player looks at and you can add a, a visual mesh representation to, to give them a hint of where to look, a little handle. Um, the drawer body, so the part that slides in and out of your cabinet or your dresser or whatever, and then there's also um, drawer contents grabber. So it just is a little liner that's kind of sticky. And when you throw little objects into the drawer, it grabs onto them and makes sure that they stay with the drawer as the drawer slides in and out. Uh, you can also optionally configure the drawer to stop if it hits something. So these yellow gizmos here that you'll see in the editor, they're tied to this stop if drawer hits something checkbox. Um, and what they will do is prevent the drawer from closing on say tall or big objects or opening into the player if you want that to happen. So another option in the inspector is to start opened. So if you start open, you can see this drawer here is open a little bit already and its default interaction is close, whereas this drawer, the default interaction is open. So there's, we can see a row of duct tape in there and if we interact with this, it'll close. And then this drawer will open because it was already closed. Now these two drawers here on this desk they're both locked, but they're locked in different ways. So there's two ways to lock a door and a drawer. So they're uh, internal locks and external locks. So an internal lock is a lock that is physically located on the object itself. So you can see here, this drawer has a little keyhole. So that's an internal lock because it's locked internally to the drawer. So if we have a key, we can apply that key to the drawer itself and then unlock that and open it. So if we try to open this now, we'll get some feedback and it says that it's locked. And then we have a little hint here that says the key is in level two, so we'll go look for that in just a minute. Now the other type of lock is an external lock. This is reserved for things like security systems, secret buttons, other tricky things that aren't directly on the object itself. So they can be external in a different room. Maybe you pull down on a candlestick or something um, and something will happen and open. So we try to open this one that's externally locked. It says we need to find the secret button to open this. Luckily, the secret button was not well hidden. So we press that and then we can open it and there's some top secret spy stuff in there. In order to set up a lock for a drawer, you simply check one of the checkboxes in the drawer configuration section in the inspector. So the first one is in start internally locked. So the required key type pertains to the internal lock. So if I wanted to replicate the result of this one here, that's locked, I would simply check start internally locked and then select the inventory type of object for the key. So I want the simple key to be the key and that's the default. So that's really easy to do. So I just check the box and it's locked. Now, if I want to have an external lock, such as the one with the secret button, I just check the start externally locked. And then I need to rely on the external system, which is that button in this case, to um, remotely unlock or externally unlock the drawer for me. So as mentioned before, these two yellow wireframe trigger volumes uh, help the drawer not close on things or bump into things if you want it to do that. So if we look at this drawer here and open it, and we try to put this soup in here. See the soup is kind of on the drawer and, and if we try to close it, it's not going to work because the soup is in the way. Now if we put the soup all the way in the drawer and then try to close it, it closes no problem. Now looking at this complex desk, it uses both door and drawer components. So on the left, we have a sliding door. On the right at the top, we have a swinging door. And on the bottom, we have two drawers. So looking at the first sliding door, just a little cubby that opens up. And the door on the right, you can see it's got some hinges there. There's some hinges and doorknobs and things included. You can put on your cabinets and furniture if you want, or you can make your own. Um, but inside here, there's just a book. So we'll put that book back and then close the door. Now looking at the drawers, the bottom drawer is empty and the top one, it's got a little block, an RGBA block. So we'll put that back in and we'll close the drawer. So this update also includes some sample door hardware. So you saw the hinges over on the complex desk. 
there's a couple of doorknobs and drawer poles and things like that that you can use um, in your projects if you want, or you can replace them with your own models. And then you just add them to your various doors and drawers. You can see there we have our drawer pole there to indicate to the player that that's where the interaction takes place. In addition to that, there's also a few doorbells. If we added doors, we probably needed doorbells. So there's three different types. So you can feel free to use those in your projects if you want or replace them with something else. So taking a look at doors now, they're similar to drawers in that they're set up with no coding required. You just drag the components onto an empty game object and the inspector uh, will let you set up different options. And the documentation that's included will guide you through a step-by-step -step process for how to set the doors up the way you want. There's also a sample door for every type. So you can feel free to just drag those into your scene and get going right away. You don't have to customize anything. Um, and looking at the components required for a door, similar to drawers, there's a body panel. So this either swings or slides, depending on the type of door. There's a handle or more than one handle if you want. And those are the activation points that make the door open and close. And then there's a hinge or pivot point where the door either slides through or swings around. So taking a look at our first example, this is an automatic sliding door. So these welcome mats kind of designate where the sensors for the sliding door see. So if I walk into this welcome mat, the door will open and it'll stay open as long as I'm there. So similar to drawers, there are hit helpers designated. So these yellow trigger volumes here, they indicate areas in the door that will detect if it hits an object. So if I put this block in the middle of the doorway and let the door close, it'll actually stop before it hits the object. If I take it out and let it close again, then it will close all the way. Now the other type of sliding door is a manually operated sliding door. So this one, I can walk up to it and it won't open for me. So I need to use the door handle activation. Now I've made that pretty generous, so it's very easy to click. So you can kind of click it in a hurry or not aiming too precisely. So if I open this and close it, you can see it slides in and out of the pocket in the wall there. Now this also has a hit helper. So if I stand in the doorway and try to close the door on myself, I can't. Um, and similarly, if I put an object in the doorway and try to close the door on the object, it stops before it hits the object. Another type of door is the always swing out door. These doors are great because they kind of look and feel like real doors, but they have a little bit of video gaminess that lets them be operated very easily and without trouble. So I can open this door and close it, and then I can open it again, and you can see it swings out away from the player every time. So these are really good because uh, it's very hard for the player to get in the way of them, and it's just kind of generally easier to use um, in a video game sense. And similar to the other doors, if I try to close this on the block, it's not going to work. It'll stop before it's the block. Now going into level two, we have an always swing out door again, but this one is locked with an external lock. Similar to how we had the drawer locked with the external the secret button underneath the desk. This is locked in a similar way, but this one has a numeric keypad that's holding this mag lock closed against the door, so we can't open it. So it says here we have to use the keypad to turn off the magnetic lock. So let's do that. I guess the code is 0451. So I'm going to enter the incorrect code first. Just any code. Doesn't work. Door is still locked. If I enter the correct code, the door is now open. And the other type of door lock you can apply to a door is an internal lock, similar to the desk drawer in the first level, it's locked with the same key as this one, conveniently enough. So if we try to open this door, it's locked internally with this key. So it says it's locked. So I'll grab the key, put it in my inventory, and now I can unlock the door and open it. The last type of door included with the kit is the complex swinging door. These doors are similar to the always swing out doors, except they only open one way and they're very similar to a door you'd find in your house. So if you go to open them, uh, the player actually gets moved out of the way through a designated safe zone. So if I open this door, you'll see a little miniature cutscene play and the camera will pan. So if I stand over here, the player still gets moved out of the way. And when I close the door, I kind of, the camera follows until I hit the latch. There are two samples of this door, both a left hand and right hand in-swing, and those are for use depending on the, the orientation of your room and where you want the doorway to go. You might need to use a left hand or right hand in-swing door. One thing to note about these doors is that they're not the most video game friendly necessarily, so they're very accurately simulated. 
in that they, they work like real doors, but they're not really user friendly sometimes. So depending on what your goals are for your game or your application, you may or may not want to use these. I personally would recommend using the Always Swing Out door. They're very user friendly and it's very easy for the player to kind of use them in a video game setting. So back in level one, we have this locked drawer. We're going to use the same key that we used for the door in level two, and we can now unlock it. And the last small addition to version 2.2 in terms of new features is this generic button. This can be used to make little buttons that press and make noise, and you can also wire them up to anything you want using Unity events. So this button doesn't actually do anything except for make a sound and animate. Uh, but you can put this little script called demo generic button on any object you want to be a button. Uh, that's how this little spy button worked and the keypad that locked the door in the other room. All the little number keys all use this script and you can just uh, use Unity events and tell the button what else it needs to do in addition to being pressed and making a sound. Uh, that's it for version 2.2 changes. Um, thank you for watching and if you have any questions please email me at support at wildfun.com and you can check out all the new documentation and videos for free before you purchase at wildfun.com slash fpekit.